show y'all what I like to do to start fruit tree cuttings. First off, you got to start with a good substrate. You want something that's not alive. You don't want to use soil from the ground. You don't want all that biological activity. So this is just going to help it not have disease and, and help it thrive right when it's starting. So you want 70% cocoa coir, 30% perlite, mixed up real good. You can see the white little chunks of the perlite and the brown is the cocoa coir. You want um, to put it in an area where you got really good shade or even full shade. And you're gonna to wanna to do it when the temperatures are average in the 70s. Try to avoid highs in the 90s and try to avoid lows in the 50s if you can. These are some that I started before, some mulberries. So the easy ones to start the, are mulberries, figs, you can do blueberries, you can do roses. There's many, many more that you could do it in a tray like this or you space them out some. Another example of roses over there, these are figs. I've got um, hibiscus is also very easy to start. Look, this one I had just started. You can also do prickly pear very easily. And you're going to want to, so you, you have two opportunities if you're going to do this outside. You can do it in the spring or in the fall. And it's going to change based on your climate, on where you are, on when you can actually do that. Like I said, look for your average temperature in the 70s. And then the, the cuttings, when you take them, they have all the sugars and the energy that they need to put off the roots. So you don't need soil that has fertilizer in it. Just a uh, bare soil with no fertilizer, no nutrients. And the cuttings will have enough to be able to make their roots and do all that. And then once they get a really good root system on them, that's when you move them to another pot and then they'll start really thriving. Move them to another pot with different soil where you got nutrients, you got that biological activity, all that goody goodness. Now when you take your cuttings, you're gonna wanna strip all the leaves off and you can use rooting hormone. It is, uh, will speed up the process I a lot of times do not use the rooting hormone. You can also use honey. Um, but I find the ones that just really root so easily, uh, I'm always in a rush. So I just kind of get it in there with no rooting hormone. If you, just, since I'm doing so many of them, if you're just doing a few of them, go for it. I mean, there's no, no downside really to using the rooting hormone. Um, but then you get really these big trees. See, you get something like a mulberry. These were all started this year. Look at all this new growth. So you want to, want to make sure you strip all those leaves off. Just that way the uh, cutting doesn't have to put any energy to keeping those leaves healthy. And that's about it. Uh, keep it moist but not soaked and don't let it dry out. And a big thing, don't wanna forget this, you've got to keep track of what is what. Especially if you're doing like multiple varieties of figs, you can kinda of tell by the leaf shape afterwards, but it's really easy to mix up what is what. So labeling is key, key, key. I've got my own label maker. I understand most people do not. Uh, I kind of like those uh, metal tags where you can scribe in because those don't really fade away. If you do put like, if you get a tag like this, that one is kind of holding. Make sure you get a really good marker so it doesn't fade away. You do not want to lose what variety you got because then it, it, if you're trying to resell it, it it's almost worthless 
you just would be able to sell it as generic if you don't know what it is so keep track and grow your own uh, fruit trees it's really easy can be quite productive can be quite lucrative just gotta market it and, and sell them y'all have a great day